Use a slider to change text within a box. Today we're going to be answering a question from a different video. I was asked if we could take a box of text and use a slider to adjust the size of the text. So I want to show you how to do that and also show you some pitfalls that come with it and some workflows to get around those. And if I've helped you at any point along the way, I've also now unlocked this thanks button right below the video here that you can essentially use as a tip jar. So with that being said, let's hop in and learn how to use text and a slider together. Make sure your text tool is selected and I'm gonna hit the apostrophe key to pull up my margins. And I'm just gonna drag from, let's go from the middle here, from one side to the other and let go. I'm gonna be able to type inside here. So I'm just gonna type baller FX is your source for sports motion design tutorials with an exclamation point. Let's make it two just for kicks. Cool, but obviously that didn't all appear up here within my bounds. So if I select this again, and I go to my character panel. If I adjust my size here, you're gonna see it all appear because now it all fits within the bounds. All right. So the question I got was, how can I do this with a slider? So let's select this text, go into our effects panel and right click and add an expression control slider control. So this is gonna be text size. And let's just default this to 50 for now. So if I open up my text, I'm gonna add an expression on my source text. Alt click, and it's gonna give me text source text. And if I click off, it's just gonna be everything that you see in here. And what we need to do is add style to this. So if I click on this play button looking button, and I go to text and properties. There's a bunch of properties in here that you can adjust. So you can set your text, you can set the font size, set the font, yada, yada, yada. So you can go down this list and play with these if you'd like. So obviously we're gonna want to set the font size and set the text. So let's go ahead and put this into a variable. So I'm just gonna call this var text one equals, I'm just gonna leave this text at source text and add our semicolon at the end. And to call this out, we need to type text one dot style, and then we'll put another period and we can go to this flyout menu, go to our properties, set font size, and add another period, and set text. So I want this font size to be the slider and we can change this to set text as text one. So if I click off, I'm gonna get an error. So let's go ahead and add the text slider equals and pick whip up to this slider. There we go and we can replace value with text slider that I just used as my variable here. So you can double click here and copy if you want or you can start typing it in and autofill if you want. So now when I click off, everything fits and I can adjust this with the slider. So I don't, I actually didn't need, I actually don't need this set text here at the end. I just wanted to show you what you needed to do if you wanted to use more than one type of style here. So you, you can just make sure that you have your text one dot style and then make sure there's a period followed by whatever else you want. You can keep going and you can even offset these like that as well if you wanted to. Since we're not using very many and I'm gonna get rid of this one, that's gonna keep this fairly short. So I have this connected to my slider now and you can see as we 
use the slider to make the text smaller, we're running into an issue where it doesn't look good from the letting side of things, where the spacing between the text is not consistent or is too far apart. So you can fix this by going up here and selecting auto, and it's going to select that, but I find that auto still isn't ideal. I like to have my letting a little bit smaller than my text size. So if we make this 65, let's see how, let's see if we can go up to 75, nope. Yeah, we can. Okay. So that pretty much fills our, our box and the limits. So let's go in here and add another period. Go to our flyout menu. And we want to find the letting. Set letting value. Letting is the spacing between the lines. So if I select that, and you guessed it, if I double click in text slider and I copy this and I paste that into value. Oh, I was missing tutorials, there we go. So now the letting matches the text size. Well, what if I want this to be less? So I could just go in here and say, take the slider and minus 10. So that keeps things a little bit tighter. And this gives me more control over how everything appears. So it appears that 83 is as big as I can go. Nope, 85. Cool. But, of course, I can scale down. I can use the slider to adjust that size. And it's all working within that original bounding box that we had. And one other thing you could do here is, let's duplicate the slider up here. And if you maybe didn't always want the same letting for every, every piece that you were doing, add another slider up here. And let's make another variable, call it our letting space. and then pick whip up to that. There we go. So instead of text slider, I'm gonna hold shift and hit my right arrow to add those next couple. And letting space, there it is. I hit down, I hit enter, there we go. Now it's spread out a little bit more. So we could drag it out. And of course it's gonna constrain within the box that we had defined. So this would also allow you to come in here and make that adjustment as well and not hard code it into your expression down here. And of course, if you wanted to add this to your central graphics panel, text slider, you have to add it from the timeline. So if I hit E, I'm gonna twirl both of these open, text size, text offset, and then Edit the range if you would like, so that you can make it bigger or smaller. And make sure that it fits what you're looking to accomplish. And then somebody can just come in here and quickly update from the Essential Graphics panel so that there's one centralized area to make adjustments. So there we go.